Hello, everyone, and welcome to the best and worst of Walt Disney World, brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan your next Disney vacation. Visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and in this week's episode, we're going to have a fun little uh, conversation, and it's going to be based around the five love languages of a Disney fan. So uh, to help me have this conversation, we have Denny Sunderly. Hey there. Craig Williams. No, hoy hoy. And that's it. That is us here. So um, we were, this 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 kind of idea stemmed from uh, we we're going to talk about like the best and worst type of Disney fans. But um, Teddy was saying like you know let's keep it like more positive. So I was I was going for a run and I don't know why this came to me, but I I texted her and I said, what do we think about doing like the love languages of a Disney fan and how how each one of these kind of categories can can relate. So. Um, and uh, Denny, you're familiar with the love languages, yeah? Because you knew exactly I, what I was talking about. <laughs> so. I am. I am. And so it's it's a book that uh, debuted 100 years ago, and uh, not quite 100 years ago, but a long time ago, and kind of helps define uh, people's personalities and what speaks the most to them. And it helps you understand those in your life that you love and trying to figure out how they tick. So the same thing with a Disney fan, trying to figure out how uh, different Disney fans tick, what makes them tick. Craig, are you familiar with love? I am very <laughs> familiar with love, but I don't put a definition on love. Mm-hmm. So uh, I will, I'm going to go into this with a positive attitude and uh Hopefully, I learn a couple things here and there like other people in this, and uh, we all come out of this much better. Oh, well, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to guarantee therapy like that, but we'll see. <laughs> Are we charging people for this hour? It's not even an hour, but you know what I mean? Um, well, uh, so there are, like I said, there are five languages of love, and we kind of just went through the list to see how we could apply these to, to different types of Disney fans. So those five uh, languages of love are uh, acts of service, gift giving, physical touch, quality time, and words of affirmation. So we took this list and then we said, well, what type of a person does this kind of apply to? So uh, we'll just start at the top and we'll talk about acts of service. So Denny, you gave me a great example right before we started We started filming. So do you want to explain what acts of service can be? Sure. So acts of service, when you, when your love language is acts of service, it means that you, it really speaks to you when others, um, you know, do something that helps, uh, helps you a little bit, does, does a little chore, does a little thing. So when my husband does the dishes, Hey, that's Mm -hmm. fantastic. That's an act of service. And it's something I can check off my list and I don't have to worry about. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and you also gave the great example of you were saying you feel like this is that group of people that are looking for that little bit of extra, like pixie dust. That little, um, you you know, you said that, and it made me think of like uh, they're kind of the annual pass holder group. They don't have to be annual pass holders, but they're the people who I just keep thinking of Jackie Gailey, honestly, in my head. The people who will get so excited because there will be like a new type of ice cream that's themed like the Peter Pan float, like. They're the people who will lose their minds when they see something like that. And, uh, you know, it doesn't take a lot for them to just feel really uh, excited and appreciated. To me, acts of service kind of stuck out as that group of Disney fans that, you know, even if you look like you're kind of lost, wandering around, don't know what to do, it's that person who is always going to come up to you and start giving you unsolicited advice, which <laughs> is, you know, it's always appreciative. Like, you know, it's people have a passion for Disney and they just, they're like, well, I, I know we love this. You should think about doing that. You know, kind of, this happens a lot when you're like in line for something and, and the, people are eavesdropping on each other and listening to conversations and like, Oh, well you should check out that. Or, you know, even, even back in times where we could all get in closer proximity to each other, there's always the people who are looking out to, to offer to take a photo for another family. So they could all be in it. And, you know, it's back in the day of paper fast passes, the, that group that would always be like, okay, 
we're not going to actually use these. We're just going to hand them out and make a magical moment for someone. So I think I think there's still plenty of ways to to show kindness and and at Disney parks right now. And there are Disney fans out there that do make it their goal to to do uh, to spread those random acts of kindness. So those are good people. Good Absolutely. people. Absolutely. And I think it's also the people when they get that little bit of pixie dust from a cast member or from just getting to get that annual pass holder magnet that that they really, really appreciate it. Um, They can they can feel the weight of what was done for them. And they they just show they they kind of savor it a little bit. Yeah, I I actually I loved your example of the photograph craig because that 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 is like a a nice way that people do get that little extra i think about um even the cast member who took the lightsaber from me and made that amazing photo of me like grabbing the lightsaber with the force and i think about how much like that's probably my favorite picture one of my favorite pictures i've ever had at disney and they didn't have to do that you know and and it was because they were enjoying what they were doing and yeah they were a cast member not but a lot of cast members are Disney fans and stuff, but, and you're right, Denny, about the little extra. I think about how crazy people go whenever there's that new magnet that you can throw in your car and, but not really leave it on your car because somebody will steal it, steal it. And then you'll be really sad, but you know, you know, but um, yeah. So, well, how about we move on to the next one, which is gift giving for, for me, gift giving. I always think I'm the type of person where, I, I, like this is a little literal for me where I, you know, and, and Craig's been with me because he's been to the uh, Disneyland park with me a bunch of times is that I am always like, okay, I've got to get this person, something, this person, something, this person, something. And I was really bad about it in the beginning because it was always be like, well, what does my mom want on this trip? I've been to the park five times this year. She needs another Disney thing, you know? And then it got to the point where I was buying her bottles of wine at total wine here in Orlando and saying they were from California. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I told her. I told her. But but no, but I, I, I think about it in terms of somebody who likes to who likes to have an experience but really wants to like share it with somebody else and that it's you know, it's the, the gift of Disney, I guess. I don't know. I, I, how do you guys look at this one? Yeah, no, I, I I would agree with with you. It's just um it's it's someone who um, knows that uh, others love to receive little treats. It's it's also um, my, so my sister and I, so it's not always a tangible gift. Like she knows that I, back when we both lived in Maryland, she still lives in Maryland, but before I moved here, you know, I wanted to be here with her more than anything when, when she was down here with her family, Walt Disney World visiting. And uh, Small World just is a favorite attraction of ours. And so every time she would go on Small World and I'm back up in Maryland, she would actually, she'd call me. She, so she's on the attraction. She'd say, hi, guess where I am? And I'd go, <laughs> oh my gosh. And she would, ha- she would let me listen to a little bit of the attraction while she was on it. And it just brought each other. And I would do vice versa. So the same thing, I'd call her when I'm on small world, that kind of thing, because it brings each other so much joy. So that's, that's just a way of bringing a little bit of Disney to somebody else. And there are those people in our lives that just love both giving and also receiving that little bit of Disney magic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I like that, you you know, Denny, you're there with me where it's not always like a tangible gift. It's it's that sharing of an experience or it's just that kind of, you know, just going to the park itself can be can be that much for somebody. Like when I was a cast member and my family would come and visit, I loved that I, I was my grandparents and my mother were the ones who always took me to Disney. And I love that I was in a position now where I could take them to Disney. And it's like kind of that cycle of gift giving that is I find very rewarding. Um, Well, the next one we have is physical touch. And Denny, you actually, I feel like you had a really great um, uh, perspective on this one. So for physical touch for the Disney fan, I think it just made me think of the fact, um, just the thought that the entire environment. So with with the gift, uh, the love language of, of physical touch, it's, Um, it's the use of your senses, right? And so if you translate that to the Walt Disney World fan, um, it is everything in the environment that you are um, enveloped in here at Walt Disney World that helps to to speak to that love language, that side of you, that side of your Disney fandom. So it is it's not just walking physically being in the Magic Kingdom. It's 
walking in and hearing um, the trolley show or when the train is running, hearing the train whistle or the riverboat whistle, it's smelling the confectionery scent mm-hmm. that's pumped in or the bakery as you pass by. It's, um, it's getting to obviously enjoy the attractions. And so it's, it's just this encompassing thing where it's your resorts. Think of the, think of the Polynesian, a stay at the Polynesian is so, it just, you have stepped into this other world, right? Because yeah. just all the scents that come in and the sights and the sounds that you hear. Um, so for the Disney fan, that just makes me think of, okay, what is, what can we tangibly sense when we are in our happy place and whether it's Epcot or Hollywood studios or animal kingdom or magic kingdom or a resort or a favorite restaurant, there are a lot of tangible notions about that environment that just immediately, um, you always like to say Rhino that, um, that that's one of the, you know, there are strong memories that are triggered, yeah. right? Yeah, the olfactory like, sense, yeah. Exactly. So I think that's even more heightened for the Disney fan when they're here at Walt Disney World. Well, I, I think about, you know, some people who say my vacation starts when I have a Mickey bar or something like that. And I know m- the first thing I do when I go to Disneyland, because Walt Disney World is my home park living in Orlando, the vacation park for me is Disneyland. And when I'm there, it's the mint julep, you know, and, and that that's like that's the physicality for it for me. And I I love the experience of eating and drinking in the places I go. So being able to, like, get your favorite Disney snack, Disney treat, you know, that's part of it. You know, the taste, the smell, all that sort of stuff is like that for me really resonates with me that that physicality to it yes next we're going to move into quality time so this is this is a this is a good one too and denny again i'm gonna let you go because you you had a great one with this nobody knows love like denny (laughs) let's talk let's all pull up a chair and talk about a little love so yeah for for me when i thought about um just the gift of time and of spending time you know Time is something on a Walt Disney World vacation that is incredibly important, right? Because we all roll into these vacations having a list of experiences, a list of attractions, a a to-do list of restaurants and everything else. And I think we've all gotten to the end of a vacation and regretted some of the time that was spent. Like, I... I have gotten to the end of a vacation before and felt like I didn't savor it enough or I didn't really, I wasn't really as present as I wanted to be in those, in those moments that I didn't appreciate it for what it was and get everything done that I wanted to do. So for a Disney fan, it's really important that we check off those boxes and that we get to the end of our vacation and just have a satisfying feeling that, yeah, we got it all done. And even if we didn't get it all done, because you can never do it all, right? You at least really enjoyed and were really present in the moments that you did have and that you felt like you and your family or your friends or if it's a solo trip, that you really, really spent that time well. I think about it, too, as as like really that type of person who really revels in those um they're like the precious memories, you know, they're the ones that really cling to, you know, they could be like a generational type fan. Like I, I know I, I'm, I guess I'm on that technically because, you know, it was my grandparents and my mother and me and now my nephews. And so it's like, you know, I think about, I have that, those, those moments where my, my nephews had a great, great first trip. And then I think, you know, back to like sitting on that bench with my grandma and there's, there's those moments that somehow are just like, captured there and you you start to really associate those really nice and comforting memories with the sort of people that you spent time with it doesn't have to be family it can be friends and stuff like that but I think about you know I, I I've doing what we do and being a video person is that I have made a couple of videos over the years of like friends last days and family trips and things like that. And I really, I walk, I watch it back. And in the moment I think, why am I doing this? This is so creepy and weird and stupid. And I'll get, I'll feel like it's not even going to work out in the end. And then I like, I look back on it and I'm like, I am so happy I did that because when I watch it, it does, I, it brings back that, that feeling, you know, and that, that emotion that I really associate with some of the places that I've, you know, been and, uh, and uh, in the parks and, and with these special people and these special moments. And so there's like kind of that, it, it has, a, it, it can happen to you a lot, I guess, at Disney, you know, and I think there's people that really feed off of that. 
Yeah, Disney is, you know, when it comes down to it, a lot of times when you're looking back at the best times you have in your life, it's usually, it, it's surrounded by family and friends, whether you're on vacation or holidays, or then in some circumstances when you can combine the two, which a lot of people do with Disney because they, you know, maybe they don't have past time traditions and stuff with how they celebrate holidays. So they, they find a way to then combine Disney into it too and make those, make those, uh, traditions even stronger. It's just, it all comes back to like, it really is. Disney provides that. They provide that reassurance that you're, you're going to walk away from these parks eventually one day and you might you might be yelling at your family the entire time, but that's not what's going to stick in your memory. It's going to be that that really special moment that you had. And a lot of places can do that, but it's something about the power of the nostalgia of Disney that just makes it even stronger. And Absolutely. and that's why I think so many people are attracted to it. And this is this is one is it uh, I think it's a, hits a lot of people in a big way. I, I agree. I think I think it is. It's time. It's memories. It's it's. I I don't know. It's one of those things that we are we are, but our memories. You know. So you always want to have the best ones you can have. Obviously, and in in this, it 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 gives you that tangible object and place that you can really kind of be like, when I'm down and out, I feel like there's somewhere I could go and maybe get get a little whiff of those memories, you know, or something. But. Right. Um, and then our last love language we're going to talk about, and I feel like it's pretty good because I feel like we're all partaking in this, is uh, words of affirmation. And I said, I think this kind of for me, it's this. It's this podcast. It's it's a Disney community. It's the Diz boards. It's Diz Unplugged. It's, you know, it, it's Instagram people, uh, Twitter people. It's these people that, you know... Uh, if you've ever kind of felt like an outcast or somebody on the fringe or the side of something, you know, uh, your fandom and what you love can make you feel normal or even special. And I think that, that, you know, there's something amazing about, um, about the day and age that we live in where you can find people, you know, you, you could be in a small town and nobody likes, nobody gets your, your Disney thing or anything like that. And then here we are, we have the internet, we have shows like this. We're not the only ones who do this. Obviously there, there's so many people out there that do this sort of thing, but you know, it gives you that place to feel like you belong and having conversations about the things you love with people out there. It, it just, it, it can make you, it can just make you feel really good, you know? And um, like I said, I think that extends to like, the people who have kind of found this calling with Instagram and and in the park and stuff like that. And yeah, there are people out there that you're like, oh my gosh, they have like they have let this go to their head too far or something. But yeah, that happens everywhere in life, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, I look at it as just this fun thing that brings people together. For sure. I um it's it this is a community. So it you know, the Diz is a community that what's going on on, on the Diz boards, there are people who have made lifelong friends on the Diz boards who have, um, those are legit friends and that they can go on when things are great and they can go on and post when things are not great and ask for support. And there are, I mean, we see it on the, the Diz boards on Facebook somebody asks a question and then so many other people can come alongside and help answer that question and provide details. I mean, there's a lot of questions with a Disney vacation and trying to figure out the ins and outs of everything. And the fact that we've got a community that can kind of, you know, rally together and be a part of it and help support each other. It's, it's a really great thing because there are a lot of people in this world that need that word of affirmation, right? Mm -hmm. They need a little, a little something, a word of encouragement, and they get to have that here. And like you said, I mean, not everybody's going to get this whole Disney thing. There are people who are going to, we've all, we've all had it, right? We've had people who look at us and go, really? Yeah. You're going to Disney again? But isn't there any other place that you could go? And you go, okay, you don't get it. Yeah. You don't. Love you, but you don't get it. <laughs> um, but there are people who get it and who can share that encouragement and that excitement and that wonder at this whole Disney thing. And uh, even though we may be virtual friends, we're all still friends. Yeah, 100%. I, I, I think that 
there's something to be said about somebody that can give you um, not only that feeling, uh, that sense of belonging, but also that welcoming. You know, that it's something that you, you're all nervous when you're step into a, to, you know, you're, you're kind of exposing a nerve when you're saying like, I like this and maybe not everybody does like this. And when you have, when you're welcomed with open arms, it's just, it, it can be this, it can be intoxicating. So there you have it. Those are the five languages of love as we feel like apply to Disney fans. The five, the love languages of Disney fans. Well, thank you. Thank you, both of you, for having this conversation with me. Thank you, everyone out there, for listening and watching. And please leave some comments about what you feel that uh, where you maybe you feel like you fit into these five love languages. If you fit into all five, that's great, because I definitely see myself in all five of them. So yes. please let us know. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. And uh, if you, again, subscribe to the channel, you click that little bell, you get notified when any sort of content like this goes up. Um, and thank you, everyone out there, for listening and watching. But we will be back with another episode episode of the best and worst of Walt Disney World. Bye, everyone.